Begin recording one. This is Dr. Benson, PhD in Aerospace Engineering on behalf of Aeromech Industries. This audit is for the Empire's new request for proposal that will last from February to October in the decade and year of 24 for original mech designs. This entry is for the Cup Cup contract, which comes with component and size restrictions. Entry name WASP or Weaponized Aerial Solo Patrol. Reusing turbine engine parts from other Aeromecha builds is easy, but making it fit is the biggest challenge. Half of the machine will be the engine itself, with just enough space to fit in a cockpit. Machining work on the cockpit was needed to allow a smooth engagement with the front hatch. It is worth noting that workers followed safety and cleanup protocols after each machining activity. The hatch door is affixed to the cockpit with a silicon seal that will allow the pilot to be pressurized during flight. Originally, we designed this flying mech without the tail assembly, but it was determined to be a necessary component so that vertical stabilizers could be added. The stock body shape didn't have the right aerodynamics for the primary engine to receive airflow, so the rear of the cockpit had to be carefully adapted. Because of the angles involved, it was more efficient to weld on an oversized panel and grind it to shape rather than try to precisely manufacture a new rear panel that would fit exactly right. In order to receive the largest tax break possible, Aeromecha Industries continues to recycle scrap and waste materials from other companies. A large piece of scrap from the top of an industrial tank had enough material to form the wings. Rough grinder work was needed to separate the top surface from rim material which needed cleanup via precision machining tools. Of course, this was done twice in order to have two matching sets of wings to build upon. The reclaimed material is incredibly durable, so machining pass and manual saw work was necessary to form the wing profiles. After final cleanup, the engineering team took some time to analyze how the parts were fitting together and if we were still within spec for the contract. At this time, we lost one of our factory cameras and had to swap to a roof camera to continue our auditing. The team learned a lesson in putting sensitive equipment too close to the factory floor, where it could easily get in the way of tools like the ultrasonic cutter. The team got into more arguments over the ideal wing and tail fin designs, so we instead focused our attention on the micro engines. These would help fulfill one of the requirements for the Cup Cup contract while getting the mech closer to a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, or VTOL, final design. After creating mounts on the wings for the micro-engines, they were machined and assembled with usual in-house procedures. A proprietary mixture of talcum and cyanoacrylate was used as a sealant to keep leaks in the engine exhaust from interfering with performance. A benefit of using cyanoacrylate as a binder is a short cure time which means we can move almost immediately to the surface grinder for fine-tuning the components. Per usual, coolant was used to both lubricate and prevent damage to the sensitive engine parts. An in-house template from previous engine work was used to create eight reference points, offset from each other by 45 degrees. For the engine nozzle flaps, information from the Holotypic Oclupanid Research Group was used to determine viable scrap that could direct engine turbine flames. Luckily, we were able to obtain eight duplicate samples. Magnetic clamps were used to carefully hold and align each nozzle flap in position. This is a newer piece of tech that the company has acquired. And I am making a note here that we should definitely be utilizing them in the future on precision machinery. With the hard part done, all we needed to do was fix the flaps in place. Typical welds were used with accelerator applied to superset them and allow work to continue as quickly as possible. For auditing transparency, the engine had to be rebuilt, which is why it looks different in the final design. This turbine engine would provide an astounding amount of speed for such a small vehicle, and careful material selection and implementation was important for maintaining as light of a vehicle as possible. Our senior machinist has been doing detailed work like this for decades, and with robotic precision, he oversaw the final assembly of the rotor blades. A snap clutch was welded to the rotor in case we needed additional alignment tests in the future. 
We've been burned in the past by failed tests with no simple way to recalibrate. A rough rotor inlet was made from cast parts sitting in storage. It was turned to spec on the mill using parallels for precision, which were also used to mark the turbine body for welding alignment. Quality assurance passed inspection of the part measurements and positioning. More welds, reinforced with accelerant, were used to complete the shell of the turbine engine. Electrical, ducting, and fuel lines will need to be added at a later time. After much deliberating, the design team reached a consensus on how to continue with the wings. Forward swept wings would have too much instability with the primary engine thrust, and they would be very difficult to fit within the size restriction. Folding wings were also dropped from discussion as they added complexity and cost that went against the very goal of this contract. Therefore, solid mounts were welded to the wing joint for attaching to the cockpit. Before attaching the wings, a stronger mounting surface was needed. This was achieved with dual inlets that would allow for air to flow into the primary engine, while also providing a secondary surface for the wings to be welded to. Depending on the efficiency of the micro engines in the wings, Additional ducting may be added to siphon some of the incoming airflow. The wing mounts worked wonderfully and provided a huge relief to the team. Picking a more mundane design definitely paid off. The easier assembly will also be useful when adding on the more intricate system components. Finally, the shape was starting to come together and we were well within our size limitations. The wings were reinforced with extra wide gussets in order to be positive that they stayed mounted firmly in place. As a side note, accelerant is not needed for this type of construction since they are secondary layers of manufacturing. During mech construction, the outlet nozzles for the micro engines were damaged. This unfortunately happens from time to time, but it's better to happen now than during test flights. We decided to swap to a low profile outlet that would sit almost flush within the micro engine housing. One more component was needed in order to fulfill the cup cup contract, which we decided to use on the legs. These were previously used on the wing gussets, but part of the contract requires they be easily identifiable. So we will be using them almost whole for the bottom of the mech. A precisely machined bevel on the upper leg segment allows it to slot firmly into a hexagonal cutout in the longer lower leg section. This series of steps was repeated a total of six times for six individual articulating legs. Ball socket joints were used for the main mechanical motion of the legs. Although they can be tricky to implement, the amount of mobile freedom vastly outweighs the difficulty of installation. The ball socket mechanism had to be heavily modified since they are stock factory parts for general machinery usage. But since we sourced ours from a cheaper off-brand supplier, this wasn't a costly operation to perform. After an ungodly amount of grinding, the joint mechanisms fit almost perfectly onto the upper leg segments. Again, more welding and one leg was completed. At this point, the joint mechanism could be attached directly to the cockpit. However, structural analysis showed that the thinner sheet metal of the body would exceed strain levels when the legs were in use. Therefore, a special mount was used to securely attach all six legs and to more evenly distribute stressors across the bottom of the cockpit. Although the fit will be close, there is still enough room between the micro engines and the primary engine to fit the rear legs. Therefore, we can continue with construction. Due to the amount of load the leg assembly will be under, specialized chemical solvent that can fuse the materials in place will need to be utilized instead of our typical cold weld connections. This will ensure a much stronger final sub-assembly. The noxious fumes will probably shorten all of our lives, so we don't use it for most projects. Electromagnetic clamps were selected for easy maintenance. Because of their exotic material, tack welds had to be reinforced with a sodium compound. Afterwards, they were fully welded in place using an ultraviolet kiln. 
two-part epoxy had to be used due to the difficult nature of the polymers that make up the electromagnetic clamp housing. Note that it is always better to have a little bit more hardener to ensure a secure connection. The electromagnetic clamps for the primary engine will be enabled during installation in order to aid in alignment. Because of this, specialized ceramic tooling was necessary in order to avoid interference with the clamp attachment. Now that the impenage is finally closed up, the tail wings can be installed. Double vertical stabilization fins need to be used in order to help steer when the primary engine is at maximum capacity. The thin connection point between the horizontal and vertical stabilizers will be prone to damage. In order to mitigate this, grooves were formed into each vertical stabilizer, which will help with welding alignment and forming a stronger joint. With the rest of the VTOL completed, we can finally move to the last part of the mech and attach the leg subassembly. One last rough cleanup pass was performed on the leg components. Most likely, we will have to revisit this when installing the electrical and signal lines. For now, the state of the leg's mount is more than adequate and with much satisfaction we were able to attach every individual limb without any difficulty or strain on the body. Our final pass through the Quality Assurance Department revealed an unbalanced weight distribution, leading to the primary engine dragging on the ground. This can be fixed, and for now we have met the minimum requirements for the Cup Cup contract. Attached to this audit is a submission of completed work, and recording one.